What's up guys? So a question that I get asked often and that I haven't really directly addressed in a video is if you have a stock W body and you're looking at like modding it from the beginning, a lot of people ask me what would be the first few mods that I would do to a stock car. Now that's not always going to have the same answer depending on the car and depending on the person. But what I've decided to do today is I've put together a rough list of five what I would call entry level mods, mods that aren't very difficult to do, that you should be able to tell a difference in, that would be a good place to start on your GTP or Impala SS or Buick Regal at GS or whatever supercharged W body you've got. Okay, so first of all, I know we're talking largely about engines here, but to me, some of the best bang for the buck early mods that you can do don't have anything to do with the engine at all. And the reason why is on most W bodies with 3800s in them, 3800s are pretty good engines right out of the gate. Now, they're very often under maintenance, so I would suggest if you're looking at modifying your car that the very first thing you do is maintenance the crap out of it. Any fluids that are too old, uh, if you've got a leak somewhere, just fix what needs to be fixed first. Don't spend money on mods when the car has things that are actually wrong with it. But let's say you've already done that and you've got the car ready to go now. The next thing that I would suggest doing is brake upgrades. The reason being, there's a lot more engine in these cars than there are brakes right from the beginning. I know I've in every car that I've had, every W body that I've had with stock brakes, and I am hard on my brakes, but I always warp the rotors because they're tiny little things factory. And if you do any really spirited driving with a car that heavy, you're gonna tear them up. So my suggestion as a first place to start is brakes. It'll make the brake pedal as responsive as the gas pedal already is, which will make the car a lot more fun to drive. Number two, suspension. Let's face it, at this point, the newest W body is quite a few years old. Odds are the one you're working on has suspension that's just as old. That's a great place to start with modifying because as I said, engine wise, it's probably already going to be pretty stout, but the suspension is more than likely crap unless you're lucky enough to have gotten one that's already been modded or one that's been really, really well taken care of. But even well taken care of stock suspension can be improved. So even something as simple as like, a bolt-in lowering spring and strut combo with some good struts can make a huge difference in the way the car feels, making it feel much, much more sporty, much more like it deserves a powerful engine. And it's usually not tremendously expensive and it's usually a pretty easy job you can do yourself at home, then take the car and have it aligned and it'll feel like a totally different car. Number three, once you get that out of the way and you start looking at horsepower mods, You've probably already heard it if you've been in the scene even for three or four days. The next thing I would suggest doing is a downpipe or some kind of exhaust modification that replaces the U-Bend and I would suggest the 30-year-old catalytic converter. If you've still got a factory cat on your car, odds are it's at least kind of partially clogged. They're, once again, very old at this point and this is not a part that is generally really good for huge gaps in mileage without having some kind of restriction. So I would suggest something like a ZZP three inch downpipe maybe for the supercharged guys. You can get it with a cat so it's still legal emissions wise, but you're gonna see a decent bump probably in power from that because one, you're getting rid of that old converter that's probably halfway clogged up. Two, you're getting rid of that stupid U-Bend design after the converter that the factory put in for absolutely no reason. Now, do, at this point though, you do want to think about where your build's going to eventually go. These are all entry level beginner mods, but to me, I would think about, am I ever one day going to run headers? If you ever are going to one day run, going to run headers and you can do it now, maybe do it first, don't do the downpipe, or maybe just wait in general on the exhaust for when you can do it because most header setups replace the downpipe too. So if you are doing the downpipe, then you do headers later, then now you have a downpipe you have no use for. Unless you're like me and you've got multiple W bodies and you just hand them on down to the next car. Number four, 
in the line of simple things going with a colder plug now if you're a pretty close to stock or stock car you don't need colder plugs necessarily and you definitely don't want to go much colder but a lot of these cars factory the supercharged cars anyway have knock now if you have an na3800 disregard this step i wouldn't do this at all but in a supercharged car going with slightly colder plugs may help you rope some kr in and especially in the beginning the name of the game is trying to get the kr number as low as possible almost every supercharged w body i've come across has kr factory so there it is spark knocking or trying to spark knock bone stock anything else you do to it only going to make that worse if you don't start thinking about trying to bring that down right from the beginning colder plugs are just cheap easy you're doing maintenance you're probably going to need plugs anyway so it's just now might be a good time to go ahead and do that and number five once you have some mods even little things like colder plugs a downpipe the next thing you can do that's really going to pack a punch is get it tuned now maybe at this stage you don't want to invest all the money in buying hp tuners although i would suggest doing that because learning to tune and tuning yourself you're going to get a much better result in the long run than relying on someone else to tune your car all the time because they're not going to spend as much time on it as you would but getting it tuned can be pretty inexpensive i mean you can get it tuned from some people from anywhere from 75 to 150 dollars that's cheap for a modification and even though you may not pick up a lot in the horsepower department you might be able to get rid of some kr which will make your engine last longer and the transmission tuning on these is usually worth it by itself because the trans is not as nearly as sporty as the engine is in these cars and firming that up getting some better shifts at better shift points can really make the car come to life now one last honorable mention and this is once again not something i would necessarily say you have to do but especially if you live in the south like i do and heat is sort of an issue i i decided pretty early on to go with 180 degree thermostat just because it's so easy to change it's so inexpensive and if you do the 180 thermostat before you get the car tuned then you can tune the fan points lower and you can actually keep the engine down around 180 degrees instead of 195 to 200 or 210 like you may see stock and since these cars do generate quite a bit of under hood temperature that's just sort of an honorable mention for something you may want to try if you live in the north you may not want to especially if it's really cold uh, or if you just think it's not going to do you any good then you know whatever you're not going to gain horsepower but it can help with keeping the underhood temps down so that was my list of five plus one mods that i would do early on when you buy a w body uh, if i miss something please drop it down in the comments and let me know if you did similar things or you have an idea for a better way drop that down in the comments too drop this video a like and uh, make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you'll see the next video when it comes out. And thank you so much for watching and peace.